Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my series about becoming a data analyst. Now, in a previous video, I talked about what skills you would need to know before applying to your first data analyst job. In this video, we're gonna talk about actually applying to and securing your first job. So at a high level, the process is going to go as follows. First, you're gonna build a portfolio, then you're gonna develop a resume. Next, you're going to want to make your skills known to other people by either marketing yourself through job applications or networking. And then finally, you're going to have to knock your interview out of the park. That sounds simple, but there's a lot of work ahead, so I'm going to dive into each subject in detail. So step one, you're going to want to build a portfolio. Personally, I always prepare my best data visualizations for every interview using Tableau. I'll usually speak to the process of preparing the data that the data visualization tool is connecting to. Then I'll explain the story that emerges from that visualization. This is one of the easiest ways and quickest ways that you can demonstrate a core competency when you make it to the interview stage. When I do interviews, I'll share things I have built at my previous jobs. If you do that though, just make sure that you're careful. When I share work from my previous employers, I'll first get permission from my employer to keep a redacted copy of that work in my portfolio. Whenever in doubt, just build a portfolio using publicly available data. I like to go to Kaggle.com. Kaggle has tons of data contributed by various users, and the other source is Reddit, specifically the uh, dataset subreddit, a subreddit of Reddit. Sometimes I'll filter by top over the last month or the last year to see the useful data sets that emerge. Lastly, when you're applying for a data analyst job, it helps to have your portfolio catered towards the industry that you'll be pursuing. For example, I have a lot of data visualizations that are healthcare focused because I've worked in hospitals over the past several years now. Showing your experience on a portfolio in the industry that you're pursuing will carry much more weight than one that is in a different industry. If you're interested in pursuing a different industry, like the video game business for example, uh, see if you can find publicly available data on video games and then visualize it. If you're not sure where to start, I do have two tutorials for you that you can follow in Tableau to get started. One last tip, when building a portfolio, try to avoid using data sets that uh, have been analyzed to death. Some of these include AdventureWorks, the Iris data set, COVID data. These are great for practicing your skills, but try to use something novel and different when you're working with recruiters or hiring managers, something that they haven't seen before. Otherwise, you won't stick out as much compared to other candidates. Step two, you're gonna to wanna to build a resume. You have only about 10 seconds to grab the attention of the hiring manager or the recruiter, so try to make that resume as concise as possible, one page. There's a very useful post on Reddit by an ex-recruiter who has worked at some of the top companies in the world, screening thousands of resumes. They have a template that you can download for free to get started. I'll drop the link in the description below. The only change that I would suggest is bringing the skills to the top, especially if you're new to data analytics and don't have this type of experience on the job yet. By keeping your skills at the top, the person reviewing your resume will quickly be able to size up whether you have the abilities necessary for the job, and it could help compensate for any potential lack of world experience in the job history section. If you're sending the resume directly to a recruiter or an employer, like through email, it looks cleaner to send them a resume via PDF. But if you're applying on the company website, attach it as a docx file as it might be easier for the HR software to extrapolate your skills and experiences automatically. Lastly, you're going to want to build a LinkedIn profile. This is really important if you don't already have one. I'll explain why in the next section. So step three is applying for the job and marketing your skills. This step is where it becomes really easy to get discouraged. One of the most difficult parts about applying for a job in data analytics is getting noticed and landing your first interview. The stark reality of applying to a data analytics job, or any job for that matter, is that it's a numbers game. It might take you 200 applications before you land a job, or it might only take one. There are strategies that you can leverage to increase your odds, and I'll cover them in the order that I consider to be least effective to most effective. So the least effective option is applying to jobs online or a company website or a job board like Glassdoor or Indeed.com you're gonna be competing with dozens or possibly even hundreds of other applicants using this method. In addition to this, there's two layers that your application has to contend with. The first is the applicant tracking system, or ATS. 
ATS systems are wide and varied, but some will have automatic disqualifying red flags that they will raise if you don't meet certain qualifications. Many will also attempt to score your resume based on keywords that they find, and will then provide the hiring manager with the ability to sort from best matching candidates to worst matching candidates. So if you're applying on the company website, it might make sense to create a copy of your resume first that attempts to match the keywords on the job description as closely as possible in order to maximize your score. If the hiring manager discovers your resume through the ATS system, it has to grab their attention within like 10 seconds. Now, if you do have a well-prepared resume and all the skills you need, then you might be in better shape than most candidates out there, but you might not be as competitive as people pursuing this next strategy. So next we have recruiters. Recruiters have the ability to fast track your resume to the company that you're interested in, and they're typically paid on a commission where they get money for each person that they recruit. So they are incentivized for you to succeed. Your odds of success might be a little bit better if you reach out to a recruiter instead of cold applying to a bunch of different jobs online or through the job boards. You have an option to show recruiters that you're looking for work using LinkedIn. To do this, go to LinkedIn, click on the me icon, followed by view profile, then click open to, then click finding a new job, You'll have the option to share finding a new job with just recruiters or the whole community. If you choose the whole community, an open to work label will appear on your profile picture. All right, so last we have networking. Networking is an extremely important tool to accelerate your progress to landing your dream job. More than half of the jobs that I've taken as a data analyst have been through networking. Additionally, you can leverage LinkedIn to network more effectively. An effective way to network if you don't already know a lot of people in the industry is through informational interviews. Informational interviews are informal meetings or question and answer sessions with people working in the company and industry that you're interested in, and they can tell you more about what it's like to work there. The process is as follows. If you know someone or know someone who knows someone that works with data, then request in the most respectful and professional way possible a meeting to learn more about the organization and what they do. Then you can use the opportunity to talk about your goal to become a data analyst and your experience. Don't be pushy and ask for an interview. If there's an opening, just let them know that you'll be applying. If they like you enough, they might give you an interview. Also ask them if there's anyone else they know who might also be willing to give you an additional informational interview at their company. Then repeat this process. This is actually how I got my first job as a data analyst. To do this on LinkedIn, when you set up your LinkedIn profile, connect with people that you already know, colleagues, classmates, friends, professors, teachers, old coworkers. Look for jobs like on Glassdoor or Indeed.com. And then for those jobs that you're interested in, in this example, Microsoft, go back to LinkedIn and search for the company in the LinkedIn profile. Click on People, then you can filter on different options. I like to go by the school that I attended. In this example, I'm choosing people working at Microsoft who went to school at the University of Washington. Once you click on this option, you'll see employees that say first, second, or third. Look for those who have data in their title, like data analyst, data engineer, data scientist, data manager. First means that you're connected with that person on LinkedIn and are probably at least acquainted with them. Second means that you know someone who is connected to that person on LinkedIn. First contacts are the easiest place to start with an informational interview, but you could also try second contacts, though you might have to ask the first contact to make the introduction. Otherwise, you might come off as pushy if you reach out to your second contact uh, directly. Two final tips is that if you know someone who already works at the company hiring for a data analyst, see if they'd be willing to give you a referral they'll probably be willing because they'll usually get a bonus if they successfully refer someone. Also, if you currently work at a company that is hiring for a data analyst, see if you can apply internally. This is actually how I ended up getting promoted from regular data analyst to senior data analyst. All right, so step four is the interview. So congratulations, you made it this far, you're nearly there. This is probably the scariest part of the application cycle. You're gonna be talking to a variety of people. You might have multiple interviews where you talk to the hiring manager, the team you'll be working with, 
a technical expert who will quiz you on at least SQL, and then business partners that are going to consume your data or your analysis of the data. The more times you do these interviews, the easier it becomes. To knock your interview out of the park, you need to do the following things. Anticipate the questions that they're going to ask you and then preemptively prepare a response for each and practice them. Now you can do this by going to Glassdoor, search for the company of interest, click on interviews, then type in data analyst in the job titles bar. Here you'll see experiences of people who interviewed at the company and the types of interview questions that they had to answer. Once you know these questions, practice every question you think someone will ask you. Practice in front of people, keep it concise, give an example from your professional life when you respond to these questions, and if you don't have an example prepared, at least tell them what you would do in that situation. One question that they will always ask without fail is, tell us about yourself, or why are you applying to this company? When they ask you this, you need to talk about either your work or educational background or both, why you're interested in data analytics at that company, and then also any skills you have that might be relevant. Make it concise and no longer than two minutes. Okay, I've seen interviews get off to a terrible start because someone started chewing up the clock uh, by telling their life story over the course of eight to 10 minutes. Stay calm and slow down. Take a deep breath, you'll get through this, but the outcome might not be great if you let your nervous energy take over and you talk too fast. Try to share your portfolio during the interview. This is one of the easiest and quickest ways to build confidence early on in the interview. You're probably gonna have multiple phases of interviews, so always have questions prepared. Remember, the purpose of the interview is to determine if you're a good fit for the company and if the company is a good fit for you. Some of the questions I like to ask is, what's the team culture like? Was there anyone in this position previously and why did they leave? What do you like most about working here? Practice SQL questions. Go to CodeWars.com and there's hundreds of free exercises for you to work through as you prepare for your interview. Lastly, dress nicely. Uh, dress at least business casual, but preferably business formal. You're going to fail at a few of these interviews at first, but that's okay. Just take a mental note of what you could have done better and how you can improve next time. If you follow these steps and stay persistent and you're proficient in the skills that I mentioned in the previous video, you'll eventually get your first job as a data analyst, but the first one is always the hardest and it gets much easier once you start building that work experience. All right, well, that's all I have for today. If you like my video, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm gonna have much more content in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll see you in another video.